Hey everyone, welcome to what should be the last video in the video series on using Unity Animator Controllers with the Neo FPS Firearm System. This is going to be a quick video where we just look at two of the firearm features, aiming and sprinting, and how you can connect them to your animations. So let's get started. Now to demonstrate these features, I'm going to be using the old low poly FPS sample AK from David Stempfers. There is actually a whole new version of this asset out now that looks pretty awesome. And David Semphers is now part of a team called Infima Games. However, I already had this one set up from a previous tutorial, and it features everything I need for this demo, so I figured I'd just stick with it. So first up, here we have the aiming down sights. Now, in the Neo FPS samples, all of the weapons use procedural animations for ADS. The Weapon Move Aimer module actually moves the entire firearm to align it with the camera. This gives a lot of flexibility for things like adapting the alignment to different optic setups, but it does mean that you're missing out on the character that using actual keyframed animation can bring. With this weapon, however, the actual aiming raise and lower is animated. Here I have the animator controller that I've set up for this gun open. In the previous Substate Machines video, this is the example that I used at the end there to demonstrate using substate machines to help organize and tidy your animator controllers. So here we have the idle and shoot substate machine. Popping into there, and this is where we take care of the aiming and the shooting. So we have the idle, which loops around. So idle to aim in, to aim idle, to aim out. And then popping backwards and forwards between the two raise and lower states to let them interrupt each other. So idle and aim idle are just two different looping poses. Uh, let's see if we can demo those. So here's idle. And then we have aim idle. Here you can see that the weapon is raised slightly above the grid. Where here, you can see that it's down in line with the grid. And then we transition from one to the other. We also have the fire animation, which exit into idle, and the aim fire, which exits into aim idle. So, how exactly does this work? Well, with the any state node here, we have a transition with the shoot trigger parameter condition, but we also have this aim equals false condition here, which is this boolean parameter. And then in this transition, the conditions are shoot and aim is true. When these firing animations complete, they both have an exit time, and then they go across into the respective idles. So the fire state here is a hip firing animation that goes into the regular idle. Looking at the transitions for the different idles, from idle to aim, we have aim is true and run is false. I just have that run condition in there since you could have both the aim and the run parameters set. And in that case, we want to go into the run animation as a priority instead of the aim. To be honest, the sprint handler component should deal with that and prevent the two parameters clashing, but I just added it here to be safe. Similarly, the transition out of aim idle to the aim out animation just uses aim is false condition. There's no exit time, so as soon as that is true, we want to leave the aiming idle pose. So that's the loop. Aim is true, exit time, aim is false, exit time, and so on. And it's as simple as that to be honest. So how exactly does this tie into the actual firearm? So looking at the root of the firearm prefab, at the aimers in the firearm component, we have this weapon move aimer, which I should be able to find on here. Weapon move aimer. This is the one. And buried in the options here is the aim and bool property here. If I change the value, we get parameter with matching name not found. So this is actually checking the animator controller, and it ties into the parameter there. So the aim position and the aim rotation here are zero because essentially the aim animation is handling the raising of the gun to align it to the center of the screen. Now, the Neo FPS demo guns don't have an aim parameter, so this will be blank. If that's blank, then the block trigger checkbox disappears and they use a pose instead. But what you could do is you could use a pose to align the weapon using procedural animation, and then use the actual aim anim bool here to trigger an animation to provide hand movement. 
So things like reaching up and popping the cap off the scope, or just shifting hand positions as you raise or lower the gun, pulling the shoulders down, things like that. And that's all that's required to use aim animations. Back to play mode. And when we aim, you can see the property here change and the controller transitions between the states. So now if we shoot, we get the aim fire. And there we go. Boom. Cool. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is the sprinting. So as I was mentioning in the video about substate machines, we have the run animation. And the way that I've done this one, because of this separate substate machine here, is by adding a second transition out of entry using run is true, and one out of idle, saying run is true as well. And these both connect across to here, and then a transition back. If this was just a regular idle state, then we will basically just do a transition each way using run is true, run is false. No exit time because we don't want to force the run cycle to hit a specific step before exiting. We want it to change as soon as we get the input. So then here we have the animation state, and I've also tied this multiplier into the run speed parameter here. So let's check out how all of these tie to the firearm. All right, so here I have the AK firearm prefab selected, and right down at the bottom on the root object is a component called animated firearm sprint handler. And this is what essentially converts your movement into these parameters here. So up at the top, we have a number of motion graph parameters. This is the sprint input parameter key. So your input handler will connect to this parameter and set this to true if you're holding the sprint key or if you've hit the toggle sprint button and false if vice versa. Is sprinting is a bool parameter that is actually set by the motion graph once you're in the sprinting state. This is what the sprint handler actually uses to drive the actual animation, since this is the definitive we are or we aren't sprinting. And then can sprint is one that's actually used as a condition in the motion graph to say whether or not you actually can enter the sprint state. So this is used here, for example, action on aim, stop sprinting. Uh, stop sprinting on reload or on firing. So that mixes up the sprinting behavior when actually using the weapon. By default, we just break out of the sprinting animation, but maintain the speed. After the motion graph elements, we have the actual animation options. These handle how the component ties into the animator controller. In time and out time are just used to block the gun from doing things whilst transitioning in and out of run. Unscaled sprint move speed is used with that speed parameter in the controller. And essentially it scales the animation playback speed multiplier based on this movement speed here. When you're moving at exactly the speed, the multiplier will be one. Twice this movement speed and the multiplier will be two and so on. And then the max speed option basically caps that out so that the multiplier can't go any higher than with that movement speed of 12 here. Below those, we have some blending options. I don't have the animations to demonstrate this, but essentially it allows you to use a blend tree to blend between a light sprint and a heavy sprint animation. Blend zero speed is the movement speed where you'll be using entirely the light sprint, where blend full speed is a speed where you'll be using entirely the heavy sprint animation. Since I don't have blending here, this blend float parameter option is empty. But what we do have are the sprint ball and speed float parameters, which are these run and run speed parameters on the animator controller. And then at the bottom, we have various options for how the sprinting works when we perform various actions with the gun. So aiming, reloading, and firing. That could mean that we break out of the sprinting animation temporarily. It could mean that we stop sprinting in those situations entirely. Or it could be that we just can't do those things whilst we're sprinting. Uh, these options control that. And the min fire duration here is just used when breaking out of the sprint animation due to shooting. We don't want to immediately snap back into it, so this gives us a little buffer after each shot where it'll wait for the next shot before starting the animation again. So with all of that, let's hit play and see what happens.
Yeah, so we run around. We get a fairly quick weapon bob. If we run backwards, then we get a much slower bob. And then it speeds up as we strafe or go diagonal. Uh, aiming pulls us out of the sprint animation. Uh, we stop aiming and it goes back to sprinting. And if we reload, it comes out for the duration, then back in again. So yeah, fairly simple really. Now, there is a procedural version of this. And to be honest, in a lot of situations, I actually kind of prefer the procedural one. It obviously is dependent on how good your animations are. If you've got amazing handcrafted animations, then maybe you do want to use those over the procedural. But I just think that procedural gives you more control to do things like sync the animation to the head bob and things like that. Anyway, I think that's the end of the series. I hope all of these were useful. Uh, and if you have any comments or questions, then hop on the Discord and say hi. It would be cool to see what you're working on with Nigo FPS anyway, but then maybe those videos have helped you just understand working with animated controllers outside of Nigo FPS too. If you do head to the Discord, then I'll see you there. If not, then I'll see you in whatever the next video is. Cheers!